Hi guys, today's video is on the Western Anatolian Greeks that have been added into RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. It's taken from a longer interview with Mausolos, one of the historians on the team. So check that out in the description down below. Like and subscribe or Mr. Cherry will have me. And anyway, enjoy. Yeah. In terms of the generics that we have around here, depending on the regions... Uh, over here in Smyrna, there are the Smyrnaean Phoebes. And then, is there an Ionia as well somewhere? Because we've got the Ionian Epibarti. Uh, yeah, Ionia is basically the, the southern half of the western coast of Asia Minor. Including okay, yeah. Athos and Miletos, the two largest cities. Um, yeah. Possibly the two largest cities in Asia Minor in this period. Yeah. And they're just very close to each other. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, that's uh, so. Those are the just the generic uh, AOR units in the region. But let's first talk about Kios, which is over here, which I actually do really like the emblem of as well. Uh, but yeah, Kios, a little island of Kios, got its own faction. So how come these guys ended up with a faction on this little island? So I, I, I don't really want to to emphasize the pronunciations too much, but <laughs> <laughs> in this case, I guess it's quite important to, to emphasize that in Greek it would be more like Kios, because we also have Kios starting with a kappa, um, which we already saw just south of Byzantium. Yeah. Um, but Kios, um, it's it's a bit it's a bit of its own diverse world, covering almost 900 square kilometers and Thucydides called its inhabitants the wealthiest of all Greeks mm. and um, it successfully resisted the Athenian attempts, attempt, Athenian attempts to retake it when it rebelled during the Peloponnesian War and then under the influence of Mausolos of Caria, yes indeed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the um, democracy of Hios was actually overthrown, uh, replaced with an oligarchy in the mid 4th century Mm. And this formed a new league with Rhodes, um, Kos, and Byzantion under the protection of Mausolos, and they quit Athene Stadium League for a second time. And then Chios later um, supported Athens in defending Byzantion against Philip II of Macedon. Yeah, the enemy of the my enemy is my friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Alexander actually restored democracy in Chios, and it, pre it remained an economic um, powerhouse because it was the only big place that um, produced um, mustic and mustic is still um, now called the tears of Hios sometimes okay and um, the island of Hios remains the largest producer of mustics in the world and if you don't know what mustic is it's a bit of, it's, it's a, a raisin obtained from the mustic tree okay and the tree is very um, um, common on Hios but not really elsewhere Damn, did they and, love um, raisins back in the day then. They love raisins back in that yeah. period. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, this is and, worth um, more than gold, man. This is worth more than gold. Shower me with money. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean it's, it's the resins or whatever. It's, 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 it's added, for instance, to Syrian ice cream and a turkey. It's used nice. in Turkish delight and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's quite important stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was very, it was very affluent, and um, yeah, it, it it was a Roman ally as well for for a period. And um, in 270 BC, however, it's more or less under the protection of the Ptolemaic Empire. Good relations to yeah. Rhodes, Pergamon, and Byzantium, and it's basically the El Dorado of the Aegean. So. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Cool. But they've gotten they've not got any unique units. Is there any reason for that? Or is it just because there's no historical evidence that they were particularly good at any sort of uh, battle and, and fighting sort of things? Yeah, well, we actually debated it, but um, kind of like Switzerland, they, they tr tr basically tried to stay neutral most of most of the time so that that they would not um, get um, to a point where people would raid their valuable yeah. mustic trees so um <laughs> they basically stayed out of the fighting and hence we've decided against the adding the unit yeah. yeah fair enough and uh so on to uh praini or praine or something like that <laughs> yeah. uh yeah uh <laughs> fantastic pronunciation once again uh but yeah these guys nestled right in between halicarnassus uh and ephesus uh well when i say halicarnassus down here isn't it but you know, Ephesus and Alicanassus, pretty much. 
in between those two. In between a rock and a hard place, really, uh, with the Seleucids and the Ptolemies either side of them. So uh, I think you've already mentioned that these guys were the one nation to actually fight the Galatians and not cower away. Yep. Um, so what else yeah. What else were they up to then back around this period? So I think the Praenians could become a bit of a favorite to some people for, for the mm. history. history. It's especially in, in many regards, and, and we can connect a few threats of the conversation we already had. Um, yeah. On the one hand, Priene was actually, and Miletos, its arch rival to the south, which is an emergent faction. Um, um, they both suffered from the silting of the rivers in the region. As you can tell here, they're on the, on the Bay of Miletos, on um, a river, which I think is the Meandros. Uh, let me check that. But... Um, in any case, um, yeah, they um, the, the silting of the rivers forced the Praenians to relocate their city in the 4th century BC. And they then rebuilt it after a plan of Hippodamos of Miletos, um, the Meandros River, yeah. And um, that kind of made it into a bit of a um, plant-looking city, like Manhattan or something yeah. like that. <laughs> and Meandros, from which the English uh, expression meandering derives, mm. um, that was responsible for this and um, in the new position they actually didn't have much space but and it was never a big city neither before nor after um, the moving but it was one of the most important cities in the greek world nonetheless because it was the capital of the ionian league the pan ionian the, the sanctuary of all the ionians was there it was crucial during the ionian revolt against the persians from 499 to 494 bc and they actually fought together with the Malaysians. And Priini um, erected a radical democracy, which was much more radical than even Athens. And yeah. sometimes uh, used to be cited as, a, as an ancient form of communism, which mm. of course, is, of course, a bit, <laughs> a bit <laughs> going a bit too far. But um, yeah, there's evidence, for instance, that some of the richer people, which did exist, and we have a unit representing them, the Hippotrophoi, the horse breeders, which is a heavy cavalry unit mentioned in the fight against the Galatians. Yeah. Um, these guys actually, um, these guys actually, um, sometimes, um, in, we have inscriptions of that, they would give banquets and breakfasts for slaves and women, foreigners as well. So everyone mm -hmm. would feel the same. And um, they also had very interesting ways to, to educate the youth which of course was instilled with hatred of the Milesians <laughs> across, <laughs> across the, the bay. And um, they would train, um, well, it's now been shown by a new article that what is meant by the inscription may just be um, different kind of boxing gloves. But um, in fact, the <laughs> Greek words, one of the words means metal balls and the other ones means um, the bulbs of kind of onion, which they may have... <laughs> fought with <laughs> yeah so they were up to strange things uh, maybe we, they were just boxing but yeah. i like to believe that they were up to strange things because Battle. they were kind of an anarcho communist uh, yeah commune in ancient greece Slingers and they just onions. hate the Malaysians. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> living and, and playing with uh, fighting with onions against yeah. the oligarchs of miletos <laughs> which was famously and rich and Miletos, as we've seen, um, it founded most of the cities around the Black Sea. Mm. And it may have had a plan in the Atai period to actually um, control the Black Sea and create a big empire there. But yeah. um, thanks to Persian advances, even though the Malaysians initially um, were quite successful in pushing back the Lydians and the Chrysos and then the Persians that were eventually conquered after the Ionian um, revolt. And Herodotus says his inhabitants were deported, but already in 450 BC they paid the annual contribution of 10 talents to Athens' Danian League. <laughs> and a talent, um, that is basically um, for one talent you can afford one warship per year, and this is just a tax that they paid. And just for comparison, the tax the Milesians paid to the uh, Danian League was more than all the islands of the Aegean combined could pay. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very, very rich. And yeah. It was a steering type for luxury. And um, the Malaysians also most likely um, invented the first um, genre of pornography <laughs> <laughs> and of porn stories in the second century BC. And of course, they were set in Miletos because it's a place of luxury and rich people. And, <laughs> yeah. It was just perfect to sit there and 
So basically, <laughs> that porn was a genre that already existed in, in antiquity, and the Romans and Greeks called it Milesian stories. Oh, right. <laughs> so they, it was rampant in Miletos then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, it's yeah. named after you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so uh, yeah, whatever you prefer, the Milesians or the Preanians, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there's a there's radical opposition between the two. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's two fascinating places, really. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. So the so Praeni, pra, pra, uh, I can't even, I, I'm just going to not say it. Um, Praenian Ephebes, they have. They have Hoplites, they have Epilectoi, and like we said, the heavy cavalry of the Hippotrophoi as well. Militos, like we talked about, it's an emergent faction down here. It's got the Milesian Horifalakes, which are a... That's a spear and board unit, if I'm not mistaken. That's just a spear unit. Uh, I think they have, they have javelins as well, at least. Okay. And they are basically an elite Peltas unit, because Horifalakes uh, means the border, the border guards... Okay. And yeah. They were established so that it, again they could defend the territory of, of mm. the polis against yeah. incursions from the Pleiadians or whoever. Yeah, cool. So uh, and then uh, they've got Milesian Hoplites and they've got Milesian Neocretan archers as well. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to ask while we we're on the subject of Neocretans. What is the difference between a Cretan archer and a Neocretan archer, and why do all <laughs> the non-Cretans have Neocretans? And I mean, obviously Neo means new, but. Uh, the Neo Cretans and then the the Cretans. <laughs> so, what is the difference between those two, and, and why does it a a exist? I guess. So um, you asked this question at the right point of time because <laughs> um, this is actually a question I cannot answer. <laughs> yeah, <fair. laughs> because um, there's much there's much debate about this. But for Miletos, we actually know why they're called Neo Cretans because they in two hundred in the two hundred thirties BC after they had become independent from the Ptolemies and then the Seleucids, um, they had hired 1,000 Cretan mercenary archers. Cool. And they settled them with their families. Mm. And they made them, they gave them basically a grant so they would become citizens of Miletos at the end of the time period, 25 years or something of that. Did they and provide... thus they were Cretans to become new citizens of, of Miletos and they would still fight the archers. Did they provide enough wild goats for them to hunt or... Was there, was there grumbling? <laughs> yeah, presumably there are enough white goats in the area, but <laughs> I can't be for sure. But so in this case, they're actually Cretans, um, yeah, who become new citizens of Miletos. And then we have Neo Cretans in the army of the Aetolians, who are from Knossos as um, yeah. a repayment of Aetolian help on, um, on Crete. But this is in Aetolia, and we have a lot of other cases like the Ptolemies, the Seleucids. Yeah. There's a lot of discussion, basically, if the neo Cretans are um, Cretans, um, if they are actually Cretans or if they're not Cretans, that's the first question. Yeah. But basically, there's two explanations. Either they are Neoi, which is basically, which means the new ones, which is basically another word for Ephebes. Yeah. Or, well, most likely, in most explanations, they are. Either they are your own Ephebes from, say, um, Achaea. Or the Seleucid Empire, and they're trained by Cretan officers, so they can fight like Cretan archers. Or yeah. they're actually Cretan thieves who go abroad to mm. to experience a life as a mercenary before for going back to Crete as adults, basically. Fair, cool, interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Um, yeah, I think obviously debate's still going on with that, but yeah, nice. Uh, I just didn't know. I, I thought it was just like the style of which they fought was like uh you know based on the cretans which i guess is partly that as well um but yeah so let's uh let's move north then slightly north up to kaizikos over here kaizikos on the sea of marmara is that on its own island as well or is yep. it just a land bridge yep. <laughs> cool so yeah right in the sea of marmara um and these guys i think they've only got one settlement yeah one settlement right next to the Seleucids. So, uh, what are these guys? What are these guys about, then? Ikitikos is, um, or, well, that's how I pronounce it in my German pronunciation of ancient Greek or whatever. We won't find the right one. <laughs> um, at least not tonight. Um, no. <laughs> Kizikos, or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, it was actually on an island, but connected um, to the land with a dam. I think they already built in antiquity. 
And it was known as a maritime power and still fought alongside the Romans, even I think in the, the Sokii War in um, during that period, they still had their own fleet, which would support the Romans, but um, they were actually quite uh, well situated and Strabo, the geographer, um, the geographer of um, the time of Augustus, he wrote about Kizikos, that was one of the cities which basically uh, impressed him more than any others he had seen or he had heard about because of his position and it was really uh, wealthy um, like Miletos or uh, Pios and it, was, it, it would rival them mm. and um, I would just quote Strabo who says that Kytikos is an island of the Propontis be connected with the mainland by two bridges and it mm. is not only most excellent the fertility of its soil but its size has a perimeter of about 500 stadia which mm. is 90 kilometers roughly or around yeah it has a city of the same name near the bridges themselves and two harbors that, that can be closed and more than 200 ship sheds which um shows us that they had a big fleet and that's why they have an epibata a marines unit of course yeah and they also depicted on a stela um a gravestone and strabo continues this city rivals the foremost of the cities of asia in size in beauty and in its excellent administrations of affairs both in peace and war and its adornment appears, appears to be of a type similar to that of Rhodes and massalia and ancient carthage end of the end of the quote but um starbo later adds that um but the romans honored the city and it is free to this day 24 a.d it holds a large territory not only that which is ha it has held from ancient time but also other territory presented to it by the romans mm. Cool. Um, so um, it, it still profited in this period, and it, it was officially part of the Persian Empire, but it had its, had its own tyrants, and yeah, really like Chios and, um, uh, and, and Miletos, it was an economic powerhouse, and according to Strabo, um, well, this may be a bit off, <laughs> Mithridates, Mithridates, <laughs> the sixth of Pontus, led an army of 150,000 men against Kitikos, supported by a huge fleet, but he was utterly defeated <laughs> by the Kitskin army and their famous, um, the famous um, fleet and and Epibatai. and the coins would actually become the, the role model for the Parthian coinage because they mm. depicted a Persian, per, Persian archer in the Persian period. So Kitskin cool. was a maritime power and an economic powerhouse. Nice, cool. Well, uh, I, yeah, I kind of doubt that he went with Mithridates went with 150,000 men if he was yeah. defeated at this time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> More like 15,000, probably. <laughs> they love to embellish the stories, didn't they? It's like uh, when, I was, when I was reading up on Pyrrhus, like uh, I think the Battle of um... <laughs> Heraclea. Yeah. Heraclea, yeah. Heraclea. <laughs> Heraclea. Um, like one source like Cassius Dio I think said that like 15,000 died on one side and 17,000 died on the other but then like one of the other sources is like yeah 3,000 and 5,000 bro <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> which is still a lot but it's not like the ridiculous numbers that they were just embellishing like with back in the day yeah just like I think there's a there's art in, in in Livy where he speaks about the Roman wars in, in Greece and the battle between the Macedonians and, and and the Romans and he knows that Polybius who was basically the, he was basically there who lived during the period and yeah. was a key in cavalry during that during the time he says that I think 5,000 Romans and 10,000 Macedonians were killed in the battle mm. and then Livy says well, the Roman historian Fabius Pictor says that 50,000 Macedonians <laughs> and five Romans were killed. And even though Polybius is the great authority on the ancient world in Gre uh, on the Romans in Greece, I believe Fabius Pictor because Romans are so cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Romans are just like, yeah, no one died. 100,000 Gauls died. <laughs> like, exactly. Easy win, exactly. boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. But anyway, uh, <laughs> let's get back to uh, to these guys. The uh, Kizikan Hoplites, the Kizikan Epibatai, and they have uh, Aspido, Aspidophoroi as well, cavalry, which are after the reforms. And right next to them, they have Kios, or Kios, uh, over here, 
right next to Bithynia that we talked about being in the Northern League uh, before. Yeah. Uh, these guys have the Kian Archers, uh, and that's about it. But what's the significance of these guys? I see that they've got a... Is that a... Is that a... Qui no, is that... That's not a Quinkareem hull, is it? Is that a Trireem hull? Is their logo? Uh -huh. Well, that is a very good question. What kind of what yeah. kind of ship? They got a ship is. as their as their logo, anyway. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're also situated in this area, and of course, um, they also had some maritime um, power. Um, but they are just um, were also depicted, I think, uh, on coins. And yeah, um, yeah Kiers was one of the members of the North League, and it had, uh, had some in significance as such, um, especially after. Um, Nicomedes, the um, uh, Bithynian king, when he died in the 250s, and he had founded Nicomedia, the capital of Bithynia, and um, selflessly named it after himself. <laughs> um, after that, he um, uh, he left his will saying that his three younger kids, I think it was three kids by maybe. I think it was the second wife as well. Like he had two different mm. wives. He had an older son by his first wife, but after he married his second wife, he started disliking his older son, and he wanted his three younger children <laughs> to um, follow him on the throne. But of course, his older son plotted and tried to kill his half siblings, and then um, Nicomedes, um, to make sure that his minor children would survive, he would write in his will. That the Northern League, that Chios, Byzantium, and Heraclea Pontici, uh, but also the Ptolemies and the Antigonids, that they should all be the guardians of his minor children and Whoa. defend them against his son. But of course, um, as you <laughs> pointed out several times before, the Hellenistic period was a time of betrayal. Yep. That, <laughs> sounds, though, that, um, that genuinely sounds like the most stupid thing to do if you lived at this time. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm going to yeah, give. I mean, my children to all my enemies my successors to this land the people who have the claim i know i'll give it to everyone that wants the land there we are <laughs> here you go guys yeah i mean i mean the, the members of the northern league were of course his allies uh, okay yeah kind of fair enough. against the seleucids but of course he had also brought the galatians to um yeah Galatia minor and the galatians of course when they saw some gold coin they were ready to support his older son, <laughs> and they invaded Bithynia, and then there were several attempts by the Byzantines and the Heracleots and probably the Chians to reinstate some of his younger children, but eventually his, his older son was actually successful in securing the kingship for himself, but there was some back and forth for quite some period. Mm. And um, later, I think it was Prusias in the late 3rd century BC, he then made the decision to attack the Chians who had sided once again um, with the Ptolemies and um, against the Antigonids now, who now made uh, a common pact with uh, the Bithynians, which was also the anti-Roman alliance in the Mas Second Macedonian-Roman War. And together with the Macedonians, then Prusias actually managed to conquer Chios, hmm. which is, I think, um, yeah. Is it modern Gamlik or is it Kutsikos? I can never... I can never tell. In any case, Chios um, remained an important city in the region and uh, had some money in. But uh, as part of the Northern League, it uh, probably attained more its most significance. So I'd not say it's, it's, it was super important in the ancient world, but 270 BC is the point of time when it had the greatest significance. So yeah. <laughs> um, if, if it wasn't represented in this form, it would never be represented anywhere. And the Philetairos of Chios we see here, was probably a um, uh, relative of Philetaros of, uh, of Pagamon. Okay, and, cool. And uh, while Chitikos later supplied the mother of three kings of Pagamon, um, Chios was also one of the allies of Pagamon and had a special relationship with them and a special status within oh, the cool. kingdom. Fantastic. Well, that covers off the Western Anatolian ones then, and we'll move finally on to our last three nations... Last three nations, we got there eventually. Um, we've, uh, you know, this has been so good, so detailed on every single faction. I've really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you for having me, and thank you guys for watching, and guys and girls, I should say, and everyone. Um, we hope you enjoyed the video, and there will be more RAS content in the coming weeks on Red Z's channel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can tell you that. 
and uh, we are building towards the, the next release, of course, of our IS 0.6. And as you can see, um, we've made great progress with the factions, the units, and the map, which is at this moment being completely finished. So um, there's going to be so much new stuff you won't believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. So stay tuned, guys. Make sure you do subscribe. Make sure you do like this video if you've appreciated it. Uh, appreciated it because there might be another couple of videos coming with miles loss uh, in the future as well so uh keep that in mind um and make sure you check out the greek aor units and the uh, and the map showcase if you're not seeing the map showcase as well and stay tuned because as i've said already every weekend guys is gonna be a in-depth uh, development update on version 0.6 all the way to release so every weekend, you're going to be full of RAS content just like this. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Thanks once again to the mod team, and especially um, Mausolos. So thank you very much uh, for watching, guys. And I will see you all again on the next video.